Good evening, everybody. Thank you, original family there. I want to call to order the uh, January 22nd, 2019 Planning Commission meeting. Uh, Paul, I guess you're doing the roll today. Correct. All right, Mr. Wodiska. I am here. Mr. Rankin is currently absent. Ms. Teets. Here. Ms. Hockenberry. Here. Mr. Krasner. Here. Mr. Stevens. Here. Mr. Puentes. Here. All right, six members present. All right. Um, the next item is the adoption of the agenda. However, prior to us adopting it, I would like to recommend or would entertain a motion to move item 7A to uh, above 6A. Uh, we have everybody here for the Founders Row project, and I think that can uh, move up a few spots. If, uh, so, if that's okay, I will entertain that motion. Did you say so I'll second it. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Terrific. <coughs> um, so we've adopted the agenda. We have no speaker series. Uh, Mr. Stoddard, have you received any petitions for those items not on this evening's agenda? I have not. Okay. Um, all right, then let's move. <laughs> Stand well, corrected. Is that on this <laughs> item? No. Is this on this item? Uh -oh. It's on, no, no. Got it. Okay, got it. Um, all right, well, then let's move to uh, the new 6A, um, the Founders Road Construction Management Plan briefing. Sure, if I could, uh, by way of introduction for the item, uh, uh, Chair and Commissioners, uh, before you tonight is a briefing, it's an information item. Uh, this is uh, a description and discussion on the uh, approved construction management plan for the Founders Row project, uh, which as you all know is located at the intersections of uh, Northwest uh, Street, Park Avenue, and West Broad Street. <coughs> construction management plans are approved administratively. Uh, this uh, and this project here had a, has an approved construction management plan that it's already operating under. Uh, the last time the Planning Commission saw this uh, was when the Commission approved the site plan for the project on September 24 in 2018. Uh, since that time, uh, demolition work has begun at the site. Uh, this presentation tonight is a follow-up to a request from the Planning Commission to uh, uh, have a chance to review and uh, discuss the construction management plan. Uh, this also serves as uh, the recorded kickoff for the neighborhood engagement process that while there will be in-person neighborhood meetings uh, subsequent to this event, the thought of having this briefing here was that this is a recorded session. Uh, whether folks can attend tonight or not, they can still review the tape and understand what's going on in and around their neighborhood. Yes, you've summarized that well. And With that, I'd like to turn it over uh, to Jim Muffler, who's on the development team. Thank you so much, Mr. Stoddard. It's good to see you all. Happy late 2019. I feel like last time we were here was about 10 years ago, but um, in that interim period in the last two months, or however long it's been, frankly, uh, we have successfully purchased the land, begun construction activities uh, at Founders Row, uh, and we are well underway on schedule. Things are progressing smoothly. Um, I'm going to take some time to go through this construction management plan that was put together by my construction team uh, in conjunction with significant conversations with city staff. Um, this evolved over the course of months. Um, <clears throat> and frankly, towards the tail end of the project, uh, with feedback and, uh, from the city staff about neighborhood concerns, was entirely re-engineered uh, just a couple weeks before we had to close. So um, this has gone through a lot of discussions. Um, and I'm happy to entertain, uh, I'm happy to walk you through as much as possible and answer any questions that I'm able to. Um, again, this is a technical construction heavy uh, plan, so if there are issues or specifics that I cannot identify, I'll make sure that I follow up appropriately. Uh, as Mr. Stoddard indicated, we will be holding uh, town hall style neighborhood meetings uh, once a quarter, hopefully, um, or certainly as needed, whether it's every three months, every four months, every two months really just depends on how the construction is progressing and if there are any concerns. So sitting here today, I would like to say that the, the first informal neighborhood uh, town hall style meeting will be in April, um, and we will work with staff to publicize that. 
So I'll dive into the plan now um, and speak into it in, in as much detail as you would like. Um, it's a fairly intensive plan. Uh, it covers the full <laughs> plus or minus 36 months of construction activities, and it's broken down into five separate phases. Um, you'll get the feel of it really once we're through the first two phases, uh, and then it's just about how the building comes up and as things kind of move around with the puzzle. Um, there are three things that we take into account when we put together one of these plans. First is safety for construction workers and for the surrounding areas. Secondly is efficiency. Construction, no matter how great the general contractor is, and I think that our team is a great one, it will bring about headaches. Um, so how efficiently can you do this to minimize headaches? Um, there's no point in spending four and a half years on something that you can get done in three years uh, when you can do so efficiently. Uh, and the last thing is to minimize the impact on the surrounding neighborhood. And again, a lot of conversation with city staff on how we could best do that. One of the things that I want to emphasize when I say minimize the impact on uh, neighborhood concerns because it was truly the driving force behind re-engineering this plan is that city staff, city staff in, in, in working with the neighbors essentially said that we could not use uh, neighborhood roads for deliveries, for driving. So the Park Avenue, Grove Avenue, the north part of Northwest were essentially off limits, which means we essentially have the one leg of Northwest Street uh, and then Broad Street to, uh, to handle all of our construction activities. That's important. Uh, because this is a massive site. It's four and a half acres. Um, it, there is a lot going on there. Um, as you'll recall, as we'll see as we go through the slides, about 75% of the site, really more, uh, is excavated to a depth of more than 30 feet. Uh, so that leaves us a small portion of on-grade area where we can stage from as we're going down. But once we get back up to grade, that whole four and a half acres is, is off limits because we've got structure there. So how you stage around the site with three tower cranes, when you're only using one road, um, I just I, I just want to put some color behind how all of this came to be because uh, this is uh, there's a lot of art that goes into this and not just science. Um, so I think that's about it uh, from a high level intro. Uh, again, I'll walk through it. What you're seeing right now, actually, and let me make sure I can use this. Um, what you're seeing right now is actually the truck routes. <laughs> so again. We can, uh, we can use West Broad Street for coming and going, and we can use Northwest Street, and you'll see this in more detail. Uh, but these red arrows are essentially the only places that construction vehicles uh, are allowed to go. Um, all of this is done with the best intentions. Will a truck driver make a wrong turn every now and again and head down park? They will. Um, will we be fining construction workers for parking, for driving down wrong uh, roads? We will. Um, we will do everything we can to police ourselves, and we also have the, the uh, Falls Church Police helping us out with traffic control measures as well. Uh, so I don't want to over-promise and under-deliver under via this meeting. Um, all of this is done with the best intentions, and we will do all we can to make sure that it's executed at a very high level. So, so phase one, again, five phases. Phase one is where we currently are right now. As you'll see up here, this is a, you can uh, ignore these dates, or if you want to, if it's easier, add a month to them. We didn't. We closed in November, so construction started in December 2018. Uh, but phase one uh, lasts for approximately the first four months and involves the demolition activities and pre-demolition activities. Just so everyone knows, uh, I mean, if you've driven by, you've seen that we've started doing utility work, uh, working in the roadways, uh, but all the buildings are still standing. We've gone through, we've done all the hazardous material abatement. Um, demolition of the buildings is set to occur in late February or early March. Uh, what precludes that, essentially what's the three months in between us closing and that, and I warn this going in, is we have to get all the utilities removed from the site, and that is so far, <laughs> so much easier said than done. Uh, the good news is we are making good progress, and I expect us to have demolition permits uh, towards the end of February uh, to stay on schedule. So this is what you see today. Um, all existing curb cuts are being used as construction entrances. Once demolition, uh, fencing, uh, fencing is up. Um, I, I don't know if fencing is up around the full perimeter of the site, but if it's not, it will be uh, shortly. Uh, we will be using existing curb cuts for all the removal of uh, debris during demolition, so you can see where some of these curb cuts are throughout the site. Um, there's not much. There, there, that's essentially it for phase one of the demolition activities. It's just a fenced in site, utilizing existing entrances uh, to control for the demolition. That will wrap up towards the end of February when we'll move into the second phase of construction, 
uh, which is the excavation phase. I have a um, quick question before you. Yes, sir. Um, as far as traffic on West Broad, will yes. any of those lanes be blocked? So no, everything from a roadway perspective outside, if we're doing work and we need to do temporary, you know, maintenance or traffic maneuvers, there is none of that included in this uh, in this phase. So the full four lanes will be correct. Yeah. Once I move into this next phase, that's where things start happening. So. And will the sidewalks remain open at that time and close later? Or they're, they, they're, they're open now. Everything outside of the fence yeah. and work that we have to do periodically in the streets and on the trail uh, related to the utilities, that's what's going on right now. One thing I did want to mention, again, this is all utility-heavy focus right now, Once and then demolition as well. One of the main critical path yeah. items we're doing right now is getting those overhead lines undergrounded. Um, so that is one of the first things we do, which is hopefully a long-term, you know, short-term and long-term benefit for anyone in that area. Um, so that's the first thing that we're working on right now. Is that why you have the temporary trail? Yes. Uh, yeah. The I, regular WID goes, is affected by the underground? I don't, I, I don't believe the temporary trail measures have been installed yet. Sorry if I'm in the wrong saying thing. That's what that... Correct. Like the, the regular trail goes away for a while? Correct. The regular trail will go away for a while. I don't believe that that has happened yet. We will be putting in a temporary trail, and it is long-term for putting the utilities underground and all the utilities, sewer, everything that we have to do in the area. But frankly, it's for uh, pedestrian safety, as I'll show you on the next slide, from a term from uh, pedestrian rerouting. Um, we are also going to be doing uh, road work in Broad Street. Uh, so again, there will be temporary shutdowns. We will be removing the median uh, in West Broad Street. Um, we will be doing sanitary upgrades to the entire system uh, downstream from our site. Um, we worked with the city staff to, for, for an arrangement on that. So all of that is going on now to prep for the full-scale construction, which I can dive into right now. So this is the demolition phase again, it, or not the demolition, I'm sorry, the excavation phase, which you can see lasts approximately eight months. but. The reality is everything that I go through here is going to apply for the next two and a half years. Um, little nuances will change as we go through the rest of the phases, but let's focus on this for now because it's really what's going to dictate the rest of the activity. So as you can see, everything in grade is our excavation of the site. Everything there goes down at least 30 feet, uh, if not more. It's directly adjacent the sidewalk, which as you can imagine, we're driving piles right there along the property line as well. As you can imagine, that's a significant safety concern. Uh, we did, you know, we worked with the city to try to find ways to leave the sidewalk open with co covered sidewalk. It's just not feasible, frankly, with this level of activity. So the sidewalk will be closed at Spring Street, rerouted at that crosswalk where it is to the other side, to the south side of West Broad Street. And as you follow this green line down, up, around, up the temporary trail, we're building a new uh, temporary crosswalk here on Park Avenue. This is the way to route pedestrians around the site. Um... So that's one of the first things that we are doing. Now we'll dive into uh, we'll dive into Broad Street and what we're doing with traffic uh, traffic patterns on Broad Street. So as you know, we currently on Broad Street have two uh, two traffic lanes. We're talking about going westbound here. The eastbound side of West Broad Street won't be impacted outside of the fact that the median will be removed. You have two traffic lanes on Broad Street with one turn lane. We need to have a permanent staging area uh, where we can have deliveries of trucks. Again, we can't use uh, Park Avenue for, for staging, uh, or we can't use Park Avenue, rather, for deliveries. Um, we can't use Northwest for deliveries. We have to be using, all trucks have to be delivering uh, along West Broad Street, except for one of the nuances of this phase is we do still have this at grade area usable. So we will have dump trucks, dump trucks and delivery trucks that are able to come in here go down into the hole, pull out dirt, turn around, or vice versa, however you see it. So you can see that we have a ramp out of a hole here, ramp out of a hole here, and that's how we're able to, uh, to get stuff out and around. You can see the tower crane placements as well. So tower cranes have to be able to swing, pick up materials, drop them down into these staging areas where we're able to, to build efficiently. Um, the green area that you see right here is our permanent uh, staging area. This area of West Broad Street will be closed for the entire duration. As you can see from here, it's closed from month four through month 20, which is beyond this phase, but that you, you just take that for what it is. This is staging, this is delivery, this will be fenced in. What does that mean for uh, West Broad traffic patterns? Nothing. Because we have, I mean, the, the, the lane patterns are going to shift, uh, but the two traffic lanes plus the turn lane will remain because we are removing that median. Now, yes? Is the... The current space, like right now, I don't know what the 
footage is of the turn lane. Mm -hmm. Is the length of the turn lane shorter under this? I, I don't believe so. I don't believe so. So here is the existing turn lane um, right here, and that is not going... I don't believe that's going to be impacted. I believe it's the way we're shifting the, the, the lanes uh, with the median to get around there so that we can still preserve the turn lane. I can look into if we are shortening it at all, but just based on the design and based on the conversations we had, I believe just by eliminating that median, we're able to just kind of shift the traffic. Yeah, because, I mean, you probably know it's already yep. challenging at times, and if it's shorter, it's going to be even more challenging. So, you know, when we went through this, West Broad is clearly the main artery through the city of Falls Church, which is why we had all of our deliveries and staging occurring on Park Avenue, uh, and only to be told, you know, fairly close to construction start that that was an absolute no-go. So in the absence of that, it, it, there's, there's really two options um, based on how to, on how to uh, deliver and stage here. So the and green area, yes? Just so people know, that's probably due to the base of the road. It's, it's due to the base of the road. It's due to the fact that once you get delivery trucks on Park Avenue, there's only one way out, and that's to keep going down Park Avenue, where you got to go past a church, you got to go past a school, you got to go through a neighborhood, uh, and that, you know, it was felt presented some safety concerns, uh, plus it's residential. So, um, and, you know, we'll have a healthy amount of trucks every day um, going down these roads. So, again, green area permanent uh, is a permanent closure, permanent staging area. But when, when we are only using this green area, we can preserve the two travel lanes plus the turn lane. Now, the blue area is our intermittent, intermittent staging area as well. We simply need more room than just this green area can operate in order to get the amount of deliveries and, and trucks in and out of the site that, that, that we have. During non-rush hours, so daytime hours, 9 a.m. to 3.30 p.m., as necessary, which will be more often than not, uh, we will be closing down this area that's shaded in blue. What that means is that a travel lane will be eliminated, but we will be preserving the turn lane as well. So, you, so during the daytime hours, we will have a travel lane moving westbound, one travel lane westbound, and one turn lane westbound. Uh, that is just between 9 and 3.30. Yeah, and to be clear, that oh, definitely sorry. pinches the left turn. I don't believe that pinches the left turn because we're just operating around, we're just maintaining this lane that you see right here. Well, I'm saying the like when lane. the light's red, Oh, oh, correct, correct. That would pinch. I want to turn left. Oh, great! I gotta wait for all these. People I mean, there. the hope is obviously during 9 a.m. to 3:30 p.m. that that traffic doesn't back up tremendously. But your point stands. Your point stands that yes. But so you're saying even though it's blue, it's going to be closed most of the most of the time. Between 9 and 3:30. For yeah. for. A year and a half. Seven. Yeah. Year and a half. Um, now, during this phase, we do have the opportunity. We do have the opportunity to use this E-grade area as well. Uh, for hauling, um, so that means that you know we do have that option as well to uh, that influence this design. The last piece of this is we do have a staging area on Park Avenue that will have Jersey barriers. This will be wrapped so it's protecting these neighbors who we have been working with daily, um, essentially uh, the two neighbors that are over here and the rest of the people on Park Avenue. This is just a staging area. There will not be deliveries occurring here. This is a laydown area so that this tower crane can operate efficiently as well, and that we can continue to build this thing like a clock. Um, it's gonna be wrapped. Say that again. It's gonna be wrapped. Fence wrap, so so that you're not just not looking through the fence into a construction area. I'll try to put some pretty colors and stuff on it, or something that just blends in. Um, occasionally, you'll see a pickup truck uh, or a normal a normal sedan uh, that's in this that's in this way for construction workers. Uh, which will use, utilize park like any other car, but there will not be dump trucks. There will certainly not be 18-wheelers. No, no kind of construction uh, delivery vehicles will utilize that area in green on park. That will also be there for pretty much the entirety of the, uh, of the project. You can see month four through month 32. The critical path here, as you'll see as we progress, is really getting the Founders Avenue uh, installed right here. That will allow us to stage from inside the site as opposed to having to rely on exclusively the outside of the site. But it's a big project, um, and it's going to require that we, uh, that we work. So this has required a lot of creativity, a lot of conversations, again, an entire reengineering of the way that we had discussed this with our subcontractors so that we can make sure that these neighborhood streets are preserved uh, and that that, that piece is, uh, is maintained. Um, again, that's the demolition phase. I'm trying to – I just want to make sure I'm getting all these notes for you all. Um, is there be, sorry to interrupt. Is there going to be any kind of uh, like messaging or graphics on like the construction fencing and barriers? I mean, sometimes you see, especially in 
downtowns, you know, and mm -hmm. more dense areas that, you know, because it's going to be up there for a period of time as opposed to just having a blank. Oh, no, it'll be, wall. yeah, no, it's going to be nice marketing. We're not showing yeah. future renderings. We'll have renderings. We'll have our graphics. I'm working with the, the team at Street Sense right now to okay. get all that stuff prepared. Oh, okay. one, one thing I noticed when a lot of the mosaic was going up is they had uh, artwork from the kids and everything on. It's a great idea. Place, and that was really cool. That's a great idea. And it's certainly more cost effective than paying yeah. for the <laughs> for the fancy wraps all the way around the side. you have to have a background. Sure. We'll f but we, it could be used for some kind of funny stuff. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Okay, I couldn't tell from where, about how many workers are going to be on this site this time of during the space? How many workers? And where, where are they going to, what's the, where are they going to be parked? So the parking uh, for this site, you know, right now, Mill Creek, the general contractor, while we're at grade, we'll have a construction trailer here where we can fit a couple cars. This is essentially the 7-Eleven parking lot right here. Uh, our subcontractors, however, we have a, an agreement with the bowling alley. Uh, and we will be shuttling people back and forth from the bowling alley. So that's where the off-site parking is. Again, we will be monitoring street parking. The police know to be monitoring street parking. Um, we have emphasized that with the neighbors. We will continue to do so to report that to us uh, because we do fine um, at all of our projects um, if, if, if the subcontractor does not fall on that. Um, I, number of workers is a tough question. Um, 100 plus or minus? 100? I mean, it, it obviously changes depending on the when we've got the structure up and you have all the trades in there. You've got more during the excavation. You've probably got less. So, um, but that's a that's a plus or minus. This is stage three. So this is now we have excavated down to the bottom and we've come up to grade. At this point, we lose the at grade level over here. So we have managed to squeeze in a couple of construction trailers on the fringe of the site. But because of that, we will need another staging area over here on Northwest Street. We will still maintain a travel lane in each direction, but we do need an additional staging here, lay down area, so that this area of the site can be accessed via the tower cranes. So we now have the three staging areas here, here, and here. Otherwise, nothing changes between what we were just looking at. Um, that's really the only nuance because now the structure is at grade and we simply have nowhere else to go internal with the site. At this point, uh, you know, we're maintaining this as a construction entrance and exit, um, but there is no, but again, these trucks will not be allowed to go up west, they will not be allowed to go up Grove, they will not be allowed to go up uh, Park Avenue. Um, well, Joe, can you just clarify again the, the timeline for phase three and yeah. is what you're showing, uh, will Founders uh, Row be there at the start of phase three or at the end of phase three? Founders Avenue will not be there at the start of phase three. That's the next phase when we'll start using it. So this runs from month 13 through month 20 plus or minus. So seven, eight months. Sorry. Let's see where we are. Is that still phase three? Okay. Phase four is about the time when, uh, when this will become more functional. And as you can see, at phase four, once we are able to utilize Founders Avenue for staging and logistics, this now, Broad Street, becomes intermittently closed. So, <laughs> so, this timing is about month 21 through month 32. So really what you're looking at is about two years or so of having that West Broad with a permanent closed staging area. Once you get past that, it will be as needed, which means if you're looking at this construction phasing, month 21 through month 32, you can you can assume very safely that for the first half of that period, this will have to be used quite frequently. And as this progresses, as the interior of the site progresses, less and less of Broad Street will need to be utilized. So by the end of this phase is when Founders Avenue will be, oh, I just skipped ahead. At the end of this phase is when Founders Avenue will be fully functional. The last phase is essentially what we call our occupancy phase. So around month 32 in this project, so summer of 2021 is when we anticipate first opening for leasing on the residential uh, and also when our first retail hopefully will be opening. Uh, it's when the first retail shells will be delivering so then it just becomes a matter of the construction of uh, the tenant fit outs. Um, at this point we are still maintaining our staging areas on Northwest and on Park Avenue um, for lay down for materials etc. Um, but for the most part we are using internal site all of Broad Street has been open for the duration of the project. 
And again, that's a plus or minus month 32 through month 36, which is the total duration of construction. So those are the five phases. Uh, it's really in the next two months that you will see the longer term construction measures being put in place that will <coughs> evolve, add some nuance as we get through this project. There's a couple more graphics in here that you're, but I've already walked you through them. This is simply, this is the pedestrian rerouting, traffic, uh, traffic signage. This is West Broad Street with just some of the technical diagramming. And this is the uh, same thing with uh, Park Avenue and with West Street with some of the more technical diagramming. The real meat of this is what we just what we just went through. So um, that's all I have uh, from the construction management plan. Again, as we evolve, as we're changing things, um, as activity uh, ramps up, we will be having these town halls to address neighborhood concerns. I wish I could tell you that everything will be perfect. Uh, we've already had complaints. We have already sought to mitigate those complaints as best as we can. Um, I do apologize in advance for any headaches that we create, but I can assure you that we will do what we can to mitigate them uh, to the best of our ability and to get this done as quickly as possible, which is what I think everyone really cares about at the end of the day. So thank you. What's the uh, work window for construction, like when it starts in the morning and when it ends in the evening, and is there like a time frame when pile driving will take place? So the, the city allows construction to start at 7 a.m., I believe they allow it to go till 7 p.m. We will be working from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Um, the city allows Monday through Sunday, uh, with the exception of, I think, major holidays. Uh, we will be working Monday through Saturday. So, and then, sorry, and then Saturday and Sunday work does not start till 9 a.m. Pile driving is a great topic. Uh, it's one I am sure I will be hearing about <laughs> frequently. Um, Pile driving will start around April. It will last plus or minus six weeks. Doesn't mean it will be going all day every day. It does mean it will be going all day uh, certainly to start. Um, so I, you know, that's I think why a good time to have the town hall will be in uh, early April to prep everyone for that. Um, because you know, again, it's it's one of the, it's one of the banes of construction, and there's n no real way around that. Um. As far as all the noise and the work, did you just say you can work on Sundays? 9 a.m. Oh, no, we will not work on okay. Sundays. Okay, I was wondering about St. James. We will not work on Sundays. And uh, certainly they've been informed of all this. Right? Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. And then I, I always ask, because I don't think you have yet, uh, just to tell Wells Fargo what's going on. So I personally haven't had conversations, but I will ensure if I will talk with my team who's been on site all day within trailer directly across from Wells Fargo, I'll make sure they make yeah, them aware as well. Yeah, because I keep asking if anybody's been in there yet and nobody has. So okay. I will make they, sure. they, they got to just be aware of it so they know what's going on and tell the customers too. Absolutely. Yes, sir. You said the plan was massively revised yes. based on neighborhood concerns. Can you yes. summarize? Again, the main, the, the, the main concern was, was utilizing Park Avenue. I mean, that's really it. Um, when, when, I, mean, that, the loca I mean, that's everything from the location of our tower cranes, the location of our entrances, how this is all staged, how it's loaded, all of that comes down through, through you know, what's allowed. So going into the plan, when essentially we had not had any feedback yet, it was us being proactive. We had created a plan to utilize Park Avenue as a staging area so we could preserve uh, uh, West Broad Street. It was brought to our attention that that would not be allowed. Uh, we spent months uh, going through, pulling this thing apart, trying to put the Rubik's Cube back together um, in the most efficient way possible. And what you're seeing was the result of uh, hours of meetings and planning between construction, between city staff, with our engineers, with our traffic engineers, et cetera. Out of curiosity, where does all the brown field dirt go? Because that's got to be all brown field. Yeah, there are there are landfills. Mm -hmm. There are selective landfills. There's one in Maryland that deposits that dirt. So we will, you know, we have a envir full-time environmental consultant on site who will be testing the dirt as it's excavated to determine where that dirt needs to go. Yeah. Who's the contractor? Who's Construction, the general contractor. Yeah. So Mill Creek is our own. We are our own third party. We're our own GC. So, <clears throat> I am not officially on the construction team, but it's Mill Creek Construction. Any other questions? 
All right, well, before we uh, excuse you, I want sure. to call up the, uh, <laughs> the speaker slip, uh, Lisa Varoxas. Why don't you come, come forward and... No, of course. <laughs> <laughs> They're hard questions, I don't think. Um, do I need to push them? Yeah. Yes. I have three questions that have come up from looking at the site plan or the management plan. The construction trailer location, I'm a little bit concerned about that if you go to the second slide or any of the other slides. When you're turning, when you're coming up West Street and you want to turn left onto Grove Avenue, I guess I just have to move right closer. And I want to turn left onto Grove Avenue or I want to turn into the back. I'm concerned about the line of sight with mm -hmm. the construction trailer because that is a funky little bend. Just please keep that in mind. Um, is there an email or a website or something where people can voice their concerns instead of just waiting for the town hall? And the third question is, you said the hazardous materials were removed. Is there any asbestos in those old, old buildings that has to be removed yet? Sure. So let me take those piece by piece. So the trailer location, we actually received a comment from a concerned citizen for that right. exact uh, point. The trailer had been installed really at the hard angle right here. Mm -hmm. uh, we have since moved the trailer to essentially where it is shown here to provide better line of sight um, for, the, uh, for the project. So yeah, I'm going to contradict you on that. The trailer is now actually in front of the old 7-Eleven building. It's at a different angle. Did they move it down here? Yes, and it's closer to the building. Just, so that's not the permanent trailer location. I can assure you that. So okay. I will get more details on that. Please. But this is where the trailer should be located. Okay. Oh, that was weird. Um, second thing, email. That's a great idea, actually. I've done this in other projects. What I will do, as opposed to just setting it up on my personal email, I will, uh, <laughs> I will set up a uh, kind of a, a, a grab-all um, inbox. Good. Okay. So. And then hazmat. So all the hazmat has been removed. Yes, there was there was asbestos in all the old buildings. There was lead paint. All that has been removed. Okay. It was all done through an environmental consultant. Okay, very good. Thank you. Yep. Terrific. Say that again. Oh. <laughs> all right. Um, Mr. McClure, I appreciate it. Of course. We don't have any other questions, right? All right. Well, I think this was really uh, helpful for us. I of appreciate course. giving us an update, and I assume the neighbors uh, will appreciate the update. Absolutely. I appreciate you uh, listening to their concerns and to the city as well about uh, Absolutely. Where, this, where this goes. It's going to be a mild inconvenience for sure, sure. for the next three years, but uh, I think the payoff will be worth it. Well, I appreciate your time and certainly appreciate the neighbors as well, and we'll be in touch. Thanks, everyone. Right. Thank you. Okay. Okay, we all set, Paul? Yes, we are. All right, well, let's go to the next action item, which was formerly 6A, I think it's now will be 6B. Uh, this is the approval of the annual report to City Council. Now, this is uh, something we discussed last meeting. I'm going to bring it up. But I believe the only change we made was on page 19, which was our... Uh, objectives going forward. Just give me one second. Yeah, so page, oh, I'm sorry, 19, 12 of 12. Uh, this is recommendations and prior. Oh, you got it up. Perfect. So we, uh, we talked about this last week. You, you have a small staff report. You want to tee it up or we're good? Uh, uh, just to call out that we are taking actually some recommendations from the Planning Commission discussion last time just to make sure we highlight what has changed since the last time the Planning Commission saw it. Uh, as you said, it is uh, trying to capture the discussion from last time, priorities for next year, which fall into three buckets, West End, comprehensive plan updates, and updates to the zoning and uh, future land use map. Uh, Shouldn't we also be like small areas? 
but we also care about not just the west end, but continuing with all of them. Right. That's a great discussion for the group. Yeah, I, I thought we had called those out, the, the, just the general. Uh, I thought we had as well. Um, so I, I think it's its own item, not, yeah. not just stuck in under comprehensive plan updates. I think it is a fourth item that says small area plans. And I don't know, remember which ones come after the, uh, the West End portion. You know, the the sure. last small area plan would be for the east end of the city. Right. Yeah, uh, the so the intent center. with West End, uh, with this small area plan, uh, the uh, scope intention is to capture not only the new revitalization district, but also the, the West End POA and the Gordon Road Triangle, which would capture everything mm -hmm. west of the WNOD. Which, the, which is really, so it's really three small area plans. And then what's left is the east end. Yeah. 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 Are those all priorities for this? Are those all priorities for this year? Is it, isn't this a recommendation for this year? I guess it counts on what how, what we think. We, we used to think we could do two or three of these a year. <laughs> That's when we started. Um. Staff <laughs> met last week uh, in preparing the uh, bi-monthly uh, bi uh, uh, staff update on the planning division activities. The rough schedule that we've sketched out for the West End Small Area Plan is to restart the planning exercise uh, in May, June, uh, and then try to wrap it up by the beginning of the uh, 2020 calendar year. So but on yeah. here, when we say the Small Area Plan for West End, are we actually, we're actually say, talking about West End, the school site, and Gordon Road. So I guess right. my feeling would be is that we need to break that, that out and hmm. so that it shows that there's three area plans that we're currently working on. Are, are they going to be delivered as three separate area plans? No, I think the expectation is that we would deliver it as a single plan. This would be similar to what was done in the West Broad planning opportunity areas, uh, that there were two POAs that were combined into one, uh, and we could do the same exercise here. I think there's a lot of reason uh, to carry that out as a single planning exercise because there are really three uh, majority landowners in the entire area, uh, and they face similar um, pressures. Yeah, so maybe they're like... Um sub bullet points underneath it just to make sure because we started out with those as separate ones so just make it clear that they're all wrapped in, into it this I don't mind clarification but it's not if they're delivered as one and this is the only one we're going to address in 2019 I think uh, this is sufficient but if you want to put it like in brackets the, the three pieces that make up that that's I got no problem with that uh, Mr. Puentes, this was the, the conversation we had last week. Um, these are just, as it says, just some priorities. <laughs> we discussed it as a group. I know you uh, weren't uh, in attendance. If you, these were general overall guidelines. If you had something you wanted to, to, us to discuss or add, then just want to give Sorry. you an opportunity. Okay. Uh, so I think this is this covered it. This was a good summary of what our discussion was. Mm -hmm. Other than some clarification on one C, we. Uh, are going to we need action right though mm -hmm. I think just to make it clear that it is the will of the group I lost my mouse um, so I can but I'm not used to that feature <laughs> I'm, I just don't uh, utilize it okay so uh, We want to, uh, would someone like to make a motion that we accept this uh, update to the the plan, the annual report, rather? I'll take the heavy duty. So move. Second. Okay. I uh, want well, you take a roll call vote on this, please. Very well. Uh, Mr. Puentes? Yes. Mr. Stevens? Yes. Mr. Krasner? Yes. Ms. Hockenberry? Yes. Uh, Ms. Teets? Yes. Mr. Rankin? Yes. Mr. Wodiska? Yes. Motion passes, 7-0. Yeah, and, and I know we voted on, we just discussed those last priorities. Uh, I do want to make it clear that we discussed the entire document at length at last meeting, and this was just the only update. So uh, for full discussion, you'll have to go back to our exciting video of the 14th. <laughs> uh, uh, all right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Next item is uh, the CIP of the fiscal year 2020 through 2025 CIP priority questions. 
Uh, before you, Chair and uh, Commissioners, uh, again, this is a follow-up item to a uh, longer discussion that was held at the Planning Commission's previous meeting. Uh, the intent behind identifying the priority items is to streamline uh, the uh, Planning Commission's review and recommendation on the City's Capital Improvement Program, multi-year, six-year Capital Improvement Program, uh, and also to allow for more focused discussion on item items that are of the greatest interest to the Planning Commission. Uh, let's see if I can pull it up. There we go. Uh, so what was discussed, uh, I think, at length at the meeting yesterday was what were really the primary items of focus uh, for the Planning Commission, uh, what's captured here in the staff report uh, in lines 19 through 38. Uh, is staff's attempt to summarize that conversation and categorize it uh, by the topics that were discussed. Uh, and this is not uh, uh, by any means intended to be the final list. It is uh, put together for you all tonight to uh, discuss and confirm that this is what you all want to focus your conversation on uh, at that first February meeting. Uh, and of course, there's opportunity for uh, discussion and, and changes before they're submitted to the, to the Deputy City Manager. Uh, I believe this uh, captured our, our questions. We had gone around the room and, and done them. Uh, the overwhelming majority, as they should be, uh, it struck me, were uh, cost-related. Uh, we, we asked for a lot of updates. Um, if it's cost-related, then I'm okay with it. I don't want to just get updates on projects just to waste time there. Um, I think it should be a much more detailed or focused conversation. Um, at the very end of this list, there was uh, just status of these projects. I just wanted to make sure that we thought um, Ms. Mester uh, was the right person to get these updates on or if she's giving us an update on the cost end of things as opposed to just the planning and development end of these. So I want to just f use our time uh, wisely and not have her just give us status updates in general. So do you think she's the right person to give those oh. updates or, or, or as long as it's clear? Everything, every other pr item except for the, the last ones in the transportation side specifically said costs or budget, um, and these did not. So I just want to make sure we were yeah, I think getting the, updates on the financial side. The idea behind including these is to get a sense of not only are projects on budget, but also are they on schedule. Uh, as the Commission may know, with uh, the last several years, the Transportation CIP has included uh, not only a funding plan, but also a delivery schedule. Uh, and there's always an attempt to capture how is the delivery schedule uh, that the Planning Commission is seeing this year different from what was seen last year, what's delivered, what's on schedule, what's been uh, adjusted for one reason or another. Uh, and I think this is where that discussion of uh, what are those projects that are uh, uh, guided by community development, by the small area plans, by the comprehensive plans, uh, I think this is an area where the Planning Commission could probably bring um, uh, uh, some emphasis to the conversation. I do think there's some cost issues. Like the, the South Washington Street Plaza, I was one of the people who wanted to know what was going on with that because it's been in RCIP for a very long time. And with the amount of time and the re-engineering, I'm curious about where the costs are on that. Are we going to get everything that was originally planned because it's continued to have to be redone? And so I'm, I'm, I'm worried we're going to be losing items from that project. Yeah, but it's such a great length of time, too, is it still within, I know it's within grant money, but, you know, who knows if it is, actually. Yeah. Well, I get no problem getting updates on these projects. Um, I just want to to be financially focused. If it's a planning question, then we can make that inquiry to the planning department. But right. I, I think this is fine. I, I just, all the other questions were very explicit about cost. Um, these were just general updates. So if we're if we're interested in the cost and, and, and Cindy's able to give us an update on I got no problem with it. Um, I do think like the WNO and D doesn't really belong in here because I don't think that's so much a cost issue for us. Um, but, I mean, if there's a reason why it should be in there, but I don't think that really affects our CIP or anything. 
you guys will, uh, uh, the, the Planning Commission will be asked to review that dual trails project as a, as a site plan. Uh, right. And so I think the idea was to put it on the list so that you all are aware that there are these two projects for both the dual trails and the crossings, uh, and that project is being duly managed with the city staff managing the crossings, Nova Parks handling the dual trails. Yeah. And just to make you all aware of, of what the timing on that project was, as well as uh, what staff has in mind in terms of the public engagement process as this moves from master plan, community planning, to uh, a successful grant application and implementation. Well, and I don't disagree with any of that. I just wonder if that's really part of the CIP discussion or is that a different discussion? Is there city money? That's uh, what Is there city money? Yes. Uh, there's uh, local match funds uh, from the city that are moving uh, to support okay. a... Uh, okay. Okay, but then that's why I just I didn't think we did. Just so I'm clear, is it a is it a project in the CIP, the dual trail? The dual trails, is it a project in the CIP? I'm just saying, uh, it charts with all yes, these, it had uh, to be included. The city is a pass, sorry to, to pause on the answer. The city is a pass-through entity for the dual trails grant award, and so I think uh, the project was included by budget amendment. I don't see it, do you, do you see it? I don't see it on this chart. Uh, on the uh, last year CIP? Correct, it was a mid-year budget amendment to include it. Uh, the original thought when the grant application was submitted by Nova Parks to the Northern Virginia Transportation Authority that Nova Parks would be the direct recipient, there was a discussion that that wasn't gonna work uh, administratively, and so instead the city was made the recipient in order to receive those funds, the city had to make a mid-year budget amendment. Uh, Sorry, right, I don't have a problem with these. Um, do we, uh, we had also talked about not having, you know, the dog and pony show from every different, uh, different department. Um, was that memorialized in terms of who we need to speak with and who we didn't need to speak with going, going forward? Like, I think we, we talked about there's no budget money for the uh, parks and recs, so we didn't need that presentation. Uh, Looked like most of the other ones. We didn't. We didn't. We had some debate about public safety. We weren't sure if that was going to really be worth our time. We, you know, there's two hundred twenty-three thousand dollars in this fiscal year. We thought Cindy could handle that. We didn't think. Uh, I'm just trying to summarize what I remember from last week. We didn't need, you know, a, 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 a firefighter to come over here and tell us about the, that money. Um, and uh, a lot of the money is really, uh, as proposed, at least, is in the special transportation. Uh, the, the, those fundings and grants. Uh, so I don't know who is speaking to that. Uh, do you have a sense of, is it just uh, Mrs. Mester or no? Correct, it is just Mrs. Mester who's intending to attend the conversation. Okay, uh, so on the fourth, it's, that's the only person we're gonna hear from? Correct. Okay, and then do we have, if your sense, is there anyone else we're gonna hear from on that the following meeting? I think that would only be if the Planning Commission requested. Okay. Is there, is there anybody we want to hear from specifically in any specific department? Uh, in the past, we have heard from almost all of them, so this is a big departure. Um, but if they're, uh, I think we can have the meeting on the 4th, and if we think of somebody, we'll, we can give her the two weeks necessary, but begin thinking about it as we start the review. I know myself, I haven't really dug into this that carefully yet. Uh, I was waiting for the introduction from uh, next week, or like, rather two weeks, but uh, we're not going to have all these people come before. So just if you want to talk to somebody, let uh, her or I know. Well, and just to clarify, uh, there are no new materials to dig into yet. So uh, what's been included in the Planning Commission's package is the adopted CIP from the last budget cycle. Mm -hmm. uh, materials for the uh, uh, staff's draft CIP will be available as part of the package distribution for that first February meeting. Relate, related to that, totally minor point, but... It, it was a little confusing to have an attachment be a document that starts on page 256 or something, so 63. I don't know how to clarify that this, you know, this is a section from that larger document and maybe a link up to it or something, but it was, it took me a minute or two to figure out what the heck I was looking at. We can clarify that next time. Thanks. They're watching on TV. They now know. <laughs> I'm just saying, I was like, what is this? Two, page 263 of what? And then I went to the website, I found the whole thing, it's fine. But. Okay. All right, so Mr. what do we Chair, need to do on this? Mr. Yeah. Chair, just a second. Um, not particularly for the CIP, but for future information, uh, could we find out how 
much there is money that has come from the CVs over the lifetime of all the projects, and has it been set aside for the, you know, the school building or what? I, I think the question is uh, an analysis of uh, voluntary concession BC developer contribution funds uh, for, the for schools. specifically for schools. Right, when, you might when for parks too. And probably for parks too, just to get a, uh, you know, informational total on is, things. Isn't that part of the EDO's standard chart analysis of the special exception projects for the past 10 years or whatever? Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, that's certainly where I'm going to go with the, the information request is to, to uh, Becky Witzman He's first. He's probably got it. I, I think we've received it somewhat recently. Whenever we get that wide chart <sighs> that shows all the projects and what the proje projected thing yeah, was. I think one of the columns is the, now maybe if it's you're asking did they ever, I think it's a column of, Oops. of, um, of the capital Whatever. contributions, but maybe I assume Just we've always gotten interesting. paid those. But. Well, I thought, I mean, I thought we were looking for the totals, but have they been used and yeah. what's the current status of them? Right. That's what I thought you were getting at. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All that. that that's a good question. Because yeah. we've always had the we CVs, and we don't have very much follow-up on essentially what has happened after them, you know, and that type yeah, of thing. Stuff. Thank you. Okay. Uh, no more, no uh, actions required on this item. So if everybody agrees that, that the, these notes and the staff report capture our questions, then we can move on. All right, um, that brings us to informational items. We already did 7A, and then planning commissioner reports. We only met last week, so Lindy, I expect <laughs> several reports, not dozens. Um, any other uh, planning commissioner reports? Uh, I have a really quick one. Uh, Mr. Stevens and I uh, had our first meeting on the rules of procedure this afternoon with uh, um, Mr. Stoddard and I don't know Shannon's last name. Ms. Schaefer. Schaefer. Uh, so we had the meeting. Um, we uh, got halfway through the document. Uh, we have now sent it back to staff to begin making some of those changes and some of those adjustments. And then we'll uh, go from there and see if what uh, the kind of changes that we made already are effective or, or what we wanted to see. And then we'll finish up the document. We scheduled an hour and it took every bit of an hour to get through that. And we'll require a few more, I suspect. So we, we started that process already. So uh, we had hoped to get it back to you guys, uh, the, to the group in February. Um, that may be a bit ambitious, but uh, we'll keep you updated as how that, how that goes. All right, uh, then we are on to the planning director's reports. Re report. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, Included in your package, uh, uh, members of the commission, was the uh, semi-annual or semi-monthly, um, uh, bi-monthly, semi-monthly uh, uh, report from the uh, planning division. Uh, same as what we've been doing uh, in the same as what was done in the November report. Uh, this calls out uh, highlights uh, in December and January. Those highlights are listed here uh, on the screens in front of you. Uh, but it's uh, a wide array of uh, efforts that are continuing to move forward. Uh, downtown Plaza renovation continues. Uh, the planning library, as you all saw, one of your work plan items went up live on the website. And we are planning for a second iteration of the planning library. So the, the planning library that launched in December uh, was geared toward future planning items, comprehensive plans, small area plans, master plans. Uh, the second iteration will be geared more toward current planning, so major development projects that have taken place as well as a recording of voluntary concessions and contributions by developers. Uh, let's see, the rezoning uh, that was approved uh, for both the high school and the West Falls Church Econo Economic Development Projects. Uh, the library renovation, the, the variance was approved by the Board of Zoning Appeals, and so the next step for the library project is a site plan, uh, which would be reviewed by the Planning Commission. Uh, that site plan is, uh, submission is still pending, but it's expected uh, within the next few weeks or months. Don Byer, uh, the Buyer Volvo uh, has submitted their site plan uh, to construct a new showroom uh, across from the, uh, along West Broad Street, across from the intersection with Birch Street. Uh, across from the giant shopping center. Uh, so that will also come before the group as a site plan and the uh, early schedule has a, uh, a work session with the commission in February. 
Uh, it was tentative. Uh, this next item was tentative when the report was published, but now it's now it's history. Uh, that is the, the briefing on the construction management plan, which happened this evening, earlier this <coughs> evening. Uh, and then January 30, uh, planning staff has their second uh, of uh, has their second quarterly uh, staff advance uh, scheduled for the end of this month. Uh, the topic uh, of this advance will be focused on customer service. Uh, last last advance, we talked a lot about what is planning's role in advancing the city toward its uh, 2040 vision. Uh, this time we'll be talking about what does customer service mean to us, uh, who are our customers, and, and how can we best serve them. Good topic. Yeah. Thank again, you. thank you for all your hard work, and the planning staff is doing a fantastic job. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it is an exciting team to be a part of. Uh, the rest of the, the report lays out uh, boards of commissions that are supported, how the division is doing uh, against its uh, FY19 operating budget, and then the status of various projects, especially public-facing milestones for uh, current planning, redevelopment projects, uh, future planning activities, and transportation planning. Can I ask a question? Yes. Uh, <clears throat> it's not really important. I'm just curious about the, the budget line items we have. Salaries and benefits, you have the budgeted amount, target, actual. Mm -hmm. what, can you explain, so you have budgeted amount and then target. Is that an annual budget target for the time frame? Is that, hey, we have 1.6 million budgeted, but we only have a staff that has a you know, have the costs of eight. I thought this chart was particularly confusing myself. Yeah. I looked at it carefully. Which, for whatever reason, this month as well, I, I was looking at. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we're happy to explore format, so uh, maybe what I'll do is explain uh, what we were trying to capture, sure. and then we'll figure out how to make it better. The, uh, so it's intended to capture uh, expenses in two categories, one salaries and benefits, and two other. Uh, the reason for capturing it in those two large blocks is that that's how it's tracked inside the, the city's accounting system. Uh, so that first column, that's the, the amount budgeted, is what's available for the entire fiscal year of FY19. So 1.6, approximately 1.6 million available in salaries, and then $160,000 available in other expenses. The target uh, is meant to be the target through uh, the year the budget numbers were pulled out of the system. So if we were, uh, uh, if our burn rate was 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 equal per day, then we would have spent $850,000 in salaries uh, through January 11th. Right. Uh, and we're roughly halfway through, so that makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. there, right? Actual is what was actually drawn down against the system, uh, and then the variance is over underspending. So in this case, um, uh, the division is underspending its budgeted amount. Uh, on the other category, the reverse is true, that the, uh, the planning staff has overspent its uh, budgeted amount. It, 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 so when you're underspending, that's usually what? You have some staff positions that haven't been filled for the duration of the plan? Or uh, yeah, it's a combination of, uh, generally it's due to vacancies. Um, so we've had some staff step down uh, and we've had other staff come up and there's always a gap when that occurs. I think the explanation is good. The only thing you might need are just some dates, like amount budgeted is for the full year, target is the through whatever time period. Yeah. I, like amount budget FY18-19, yeah. target through January And then, it, and I think I understand now what these two footnotes is. The Footnote one means, hey, this is for the planning division. Mm -hmm. Footnote two means, I guess, the community planning and economic development services is, is a different group. group. I, I, get, I understand that it's the way the system captures it, but it's not a one-for-one -one connection. It saying. is not a one-for-one -one connection that, uh, for historical reasons, uh, building safety, economic development, uh, planning and zoning all have separate uh, 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 cost organizations for their salary and benefits. Uh, as part of the restructuring of the department in order to smooth uh, costs and make sure funding is available as needed, uh, the, uh, the non-salary expenses are grouped together. For example, uh, there was a, an amendment to the uh, uh, building code this year and the building safety division needed new books uh, and they cost $4,500. Uh, when you're looking at $160,000 for the entire group of 20 people, if they were on an island, it would have been very difficult for them to buy the code books. Um, right. So by capturing everybody in one larger group, uh, we're able to cover those expenses. And then my final question is, <clears throat> the personnel section is meant to give us updates on people who have left or who have arrived. Correct. This is uh, responding to uh, an item that's actually in the Planning Commission's Rules of Procedure. 
uh, which stipulate that the, the Planning Commission wants to be monitoring uh, the operating budget of the Planning Division. And so this is an attempt to, to give yeah, you all the information. There. <laughs> it's in the rules of procedure. <laughs> I think it's a good thing for somebody to be watching the budget, um, and and so I'm happy to include this because it's it's a part of how how the division provides service. That it's not only are we getting the work plan items done, but are we doing it at the cost that was agreed upon? I also think it's useful in your department. It's the document itself, <laughs> you know, you're just working on projects. Sometimes it's good to have something like this as a big picture. Yeah, I think it's fine and. And I like the idea of personnel updates because just for us, because we see staff come and go and like, ah, oh, it's a new person. I don't know what happened to that person. No, oh, they left months ago. I don't know. So it, it would be great to have those. You updates. said there's like 20 people. I think that's the current. Approximately within the department, including building safety, planning, zoning, and economic development. How many is planning and zoning? Uh, planning and zoning is uh, approximately a dozen, mm -hmm. uh, somewhere between nine and 12. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> well, it depends on how you count people. So, uh, for oh, example, touch 10 <laughs> <laughs> uh, for example, Akita uh, Ruzi uh, is both the deputy zoning official and a principal planner. Uh, Carly Aubrey is a principal planner and the West Falls Church Project uh, manager. And so, uh, folks are are often um, they have one foot in three camps. Uh, so, I think uh, some dates would be great. I, 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 well, I did figure out quite. Quickly, I was like, wow, you're spending a lot of money after 11 days in the new year. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but just, just, to, just to remind people that someone said it's the fiscal year budget, because yep. it gives me a second. Um, and, uh, and just uh, that's about it. I think dates were really helpful. It's like where you're at. Um, but you were going to say something? No, I was just going to just say I finally observed the wonderful cardboard separation between your dad, it was really, truly magnificent. That was, and I can't take credit for it. Uh, uh, Jim Snyder, he's not or a Jim director Snyder. for no reason. The, um, <laughs> that cardboard box uh, was not only a uh, privacy and workability solution, there's a cardboard box separating my desk from <laughs> Becky Witzman's. Uh, not only does it provide us some ability to both be on the phone at the same time, uh, but also it stores all our flip charts, which we otherwise didn't have space for. So it's working wonderfully. So are you, are you concerned at all about these this negative variance on salaries and benefits, or this is because of you know changes that were unexpected, or because uh, I assume that your budget will be impacted if this number doesn't get back to the original target? Uh, the budget for the following fiscal year is determined by your by your current budget as well as a, a programmed bump for staff, assuming um, uh, sufficient. Uh, staff development. The so I'm not worried about the the negative variance in the salaries and benefits line. Um, that number is already baked in. The uh, variance on the uh, other line item uh, that'll probably be resolved as we go through the end of the fiscal year, or by covering with the with the underspending on salary and benefits. Um, we are also looking at. Uh, on the building safety side, the idea of bringing on a new uh, building inspector now in order to be ready when the high school wants to begin construction. Uh, and so it may be that by being within this larger uh, uh, services department that some of these underspent funds would go to cover a portion of that, that position. So I meant, well, you answered my one question on the financial side, but also in terms of being understaffed, is this of a concern that you are under payroll because you have less people than you need and are you planning on hiring more people or, or this is just a flux because people are on you know, sick leave or some other reason? We do have two members who are on uh, medical leave at the moment and that is obviously straining resources. That's um, uh, the reason for one, having one staff member here tonight instead of two. Um, it's also the reason why the small area planning process as well as some of the master plans that were intended have been delayed. Um, we are looking at options internally in order to, to get those projects back online. Uh, and I think part of it may be dipping into uh, this um, uh, one-time availability uh, to, to close out the end of the fiscal year. And then if the list of project updates spurred a couple questions, is now a good time to ask? Just Absolutely. Uh, one, I'm just curious about, I only need like a quick update, the... Um, the Oakwood site plan, I don't know that I've heard what they're doing up there. Is it? 
anything interesting? Sure, that, uh, and uh, so there was a final consideration given for administrative approval in it, and it did receive uh, an approval. Uh, the approval happened after your materials were submitted for this uh, meeting, uh, but they are already included in the electronic distribution for next. I can read uh, them the next, next meeting. Weekend, no uh, it's minor adjustments to the to the internal courtyard. Uh, so they are replacing some of the tennis courts. I think uh, there are about seventy-two tennis courts right now, and they're taking it down to one. Uh, I think seventy-two. There are a lot of tennis courts right now, and they're, and they're reducing that number uh, based on how many people are using it. They're they're keeping the pool. Uh, they're adding more uh, seating area. Uh, they're adding. A, they're converting the basketball court to a half court basketball court. Uh, they're making some exterior modifications and interior modifications to the clubhouse, uh, and so that's what's governed by the site plan. Uh, as part of the site plan process. Uh, we were able to work with the applicant to grant uh, an easement along uh, Roosevelt Boulevard should the city ever elect to do future street uh, enhancements along Roosevelt Boulevard, which is a major connection to the, to the East Falls Church Metro. Uh, the, the easements for that are already on the books, uh, as well as uh, notes on the plan uh, that should there be redevelopment adjacent to the site that the property owner would coordinate on interparcel access. Nice. And then my other question had to do with the Neighborhood traffic calming, as I mentioned, the Little Falls and Great Falls confirmed steering committee still active. Mm -hmm. I live on Little Falls. I didn't know if that was. Is this? I know we had gotten some traffic calming a couple years ago. I don't know if this is a question about. Do, do you do you know anything about this? I guess. Yes. So uh, generally, uh, the city has sufficient staff to keep two neighborhood traffic calming projects going simultaneously. Uh, Little Falls and Great Falls was selected uh, by the CACT, I think, at the time. It was Little Falls and Great Falls was one case, and probably North Maple was the other. And so those were both moving forward. Uh, and then there was, uh, in addition to the workload, uh, Northwest Street and Lincoln Avenue were selected for new crosswalks and, and, and striping of the parking lanes, crosswalks to, the, to uh, Lincoln Park. Uh, it was a nice project, uh, but what it meant is that one of the existing projects uh, that had been selected had to be deprioritized temporarily. Uh, so now there's an attempt to get Little Falls and Great Falls reactivated. Uh, in the intervening time, some of the members from the Neighborhood Steering Committee have moved out of the area. And so the first step is to reconvene the steering yeah. committee. Yeah, and do you, is the Little Falls and Great Falls, is the is that like that intersection? Is that the, the effort that is being considered? I, 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 just, uh, when, I knew down Little Falls, we had some track. We got a stop sign this a couple years ago. Yep. And, and, uh, speed bump or something but uh, what initially uh, generated the request was along Great Falls and it was uh, speeding and crashes into parallel parked cars especially after hours uh, it's a fairly narrow street uh, and uh, so that was the that was the genesis for the for the request uh, Little Falls had also submitted a request some years earlier uh, and so those the thought was they could be handled simultaneously yeah. so it could include um, uh, striping, speed humps, uh, adjustments to how parking is handled, uh, painting of additional crosswalks. Yeah, because on Little Falls, we, we could use a curb cut and a crosswalk at uh, Columbia, where yes. Columbia comes in. But yeah, uh, West Columbia. The stop side's been great, by the yeah. way. Oh, good. The, uh, that, was, uh, that was a move by the city's previous transportation engineer. Um, I think sometimes people ask for a stop sign and there's one reason or another not to put it in and then conditions change, it can be reevaluated and then it may be more appropriate like it was in this yeah, case. Yeah, I mean only half the people stop, but that's better than before. <laughs> well, I think that's an intersection that just wasn't designed uh, for the kind of use that it's getting today in terms of the, the school bus stop and the level of pedestrian traffic and the proximity to the WNOD. And so I think that would be a great intersection to clean up with uh, curb extensions, um, lighting at a future time. Um, uh, better marked crosswalk. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. <clears throat> Everything uh, on schedule regarding bike share? Yes. Uh, so the city is still under contract uh, with the provider to deliver the stations by the end of March, uh, and the expectation would be for uh, stations to be available for rollout end of April. Uh, the city is working with city staff is reaching out to uh, vendors that could help with uh, noticing and marketing including uh, maps um, um, trifold brochures uh, reduced or, or free um, uh, memberships uh, anything that can be done to get the word out about bike share coming to the city uh, how many stations are going to be rolled out in uh, end of April 
Uh, uh, some of it's a matter of how you count. Uh, I think it's somewhere between eight and, and thirteen. I can get the exact number. Uh, the that's reason all coming out. There's like two that were not, and that's still the plan. Correct. Okay. Uh, yeah. So all the stations along uh, Washington Street and Broad Street, as well as the two stations at the Metro, will be online. Uh, so Arlington has already installed a station at East Falls Church. Fairfax County is installing a station at West Falls Church. Terrific. All right. Any other questions? I did have one more because I didn't remember. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Congratulations. Congratulations. Mason Rowe made me think of this. But, uh, so yes, the Founders sure. Row is going to have that public art. Sounds yes. like we might have public art at our little pocket park on Broad downtown. Uh -huh. Have we developed a process for... It's been worked on. Being worked on. By, by in, like, Being in the light on. of the public? Like, by who? Cats. Cat at Arts and Cultural. The Arts and Cultural District, uh, Arts and Culture uh, Council is looking at uh, public art policy. Um, the, by charter, the Planning Commission does have a review right. of uh, public art installations. Yeah, I don't, I'm mostly just making sure there's some But let me just say that they're working on it for a long time. The public art for Founders Row is typically, uh, the expectation is that it will be handled through the site plan amendment process. Yeah. Are you, I'm with your sister. Um, are you going to comment on the affordable living policy, or it was included in our packet I, or, and on our agenda, or the, uh, the electronic one at least? I don't know if you had anything you wanted to say on that. Uh, it's included in your packet as a, as a correspondence information item. Uh, I'm sorry, it was included under the director's report to make the, the commission aware that it was adopted uh, and it does include various policy uh, strategies for uh, increasing and maintaining uh, the supply of affordable living in the city. Uh, Lindy, your name was not on the front know, cover. It was in the bios, though. I well, oh, just, that's okay. I was just there. It's odd. I mean, yeah, you're like the I only one. Live. I mean, it's been adopted. There's nothing you can do. You know, like, it, it, like you I, know. It's bizarre. It's pretty hard to ignore it, but that I don't mind. Okay. I mean, yeah, I was there. No, constantly. it says you were. It just doesn't say on the cover page. That's I all. know. All right. <laughs> I saw that, but I didn't say anything about it. No big well, deal. Well, I said something. For but you. thank you. <laughs> our, our, but, never mind. Um, all right, that's it on the, the uh, director's report. Then we're going to correspondence, and correspondence was big news about the new. Um, Class registration, ninety sixth annual. I think it's the ninety sixth time. Time. More than once a year. <laughs> I think it's the ninety sixth time. Do we need anybody needs to take this? I think we have. We're all certified, right? I mean, I think our rules of procedure say that we should each it take. It does say it. Rules well, of procedures. Paul, Paul proposed that we have to retake it. What? It wasn't term. retake, it was continuing education. <laughs> I'm just saying what he mentioned. I can see it's going to be an exciting discussion item when the rules of <laughs> procedure no, no, come back. Take this course, he said, just get continuing education yeah. um, once, once a... Maybe I misunderstood. Maybe an appointment every four years. All right. Uh, Lindy does not any want questions to about this correspondence? Again. Then I'm... Uh, none? Okay. It was a very expensive for planning commissioner to attend the Virginia State Planning Conference, which is moving around the state every year, and very inexpensive. I mean, the city would probably cover it, but it's usually like, I don't know, 100 bucks or less to attend really? a two-day. Yeah, if you're a planning, a planning commissioner or a zoning board member, you can attend the Virginia APA conference. I think this year it's in, I want to say Norfolk or, or somewhere down in Hampton Roads. Last year, last year it was Wintergreen. The year before that it was in Richmond. Roanoke. Roanoke. It moves around the state. One year it was up here. One year it was in, in Leesburg. Like What's that? It's always in these five-hour driveways. No, one actually about three or four years ago it was in Lansdowne over in Loudoun County. So it, occasionally it's up here, but it, anyhow, it's okay. over two I, I days. I did not know that. Many interesting sessions. I mean, Paul, I'm sure has been, and his staff goes, but uh, but the the rate to, and the rate for you know planners is relatively expensive, but for a uh, planning board or sorry, planning commissioner, it's cheap. So okay. it's certainly though, a lot less expensive than the national uh, conference. Right. Oh, it's, yeah. It's yeah, I, I would I would list it as one of the more affordable professional conferences around, uh, and uh, the Virginia program is is excellent, and it focuses on, uh, of course, Virginia legislative items. For example, there were uh, some well attended sessions on changes to proffer law uh, a couple of years ago, and so they do a really uh, they do a good job of of programming uh, things that are 
happening now, current activities. Okay. Paul, do you know if the APA still has, they used to have uh, programs that were open to the public in, in the district. Yes, Tuesdays uh, with APA. Uh, they uh, run in the, in the district on Tuesday evenings, as you said. Uh, I think they're usually in the National Building Museum. Uh, I can certainly try to get those out to the commission. Yeah, it might be good if it's not too much of a bother. Just they may be on hold right now. What's that? <laughs> they may be on hold oh, right yeah? now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Forget <laughs> about anything down there. <laughs> All right. Leave location well, on hold. Uh, I want to thank everybody for uh, commenting two meetings back to back. Uh, that was uh, unique, but uh, we got through it, and uh, <laughs> the next meeting's in two weeks, and it really kicks off what is going to be our traditional busy six weeks. So uh, I'm glad we're getting out of here pretty early, and uh, it's going to be busy Make note. over the next hey, uh, little bit. Make note. All right. Uh, anything else? Uh, anything? I'm the only All one. Right,